it's Monday morning, so I have to pinch myself that that's here. Went to see Caleb last night, obviously, in Liverpool. Brilliant and really good how he paints the picture of farming and how to get into it to people that have never been born into it. So, um, well done to that, Caleb. Um, only the problem is going out on a Sunday night means when you wake up on a Monday morning, you think it's Sunday. So, I was just like, ah, ha, ha, ha. oh no, it's Monday. So, yeah, hopefully, though, it's dry this week so we can get some proper work done, get back into some fields and um, hopefully get some sewing done at the end of the week as well. So we left the ignition on yesterday, let's see if it starts. Yay! Yeah, if you turn it to one too far, it goes into power mode, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh well, that's good. It's a beast, isn't it? It's had a smile. Yeah. And, the, and Amy was saying that you were miserable. <laughs> it's a beast, isn't it? Absolute monster. Notice that orange lever there. Like the emergency brake or something. Morgan and Mullet's amazing voyage. <laughs> One of many. I think you'll still be smiling, smiling after 15 hours a day, innit? I'll be loving it, as long as it's not straight piped. <laughs> Do you know what, when you sat there, you can't see the exhaust, can you? Not really, no, it's actually really well done. Well, isn't it? Yeah. Or the air cleaner. You can't see the air cleaner at all. No. I started filling up with fuel yesterday but got bored so it's not completely full. Ran out of diesel. Yeah, when you back up. Yeah. See, it goes the opposite way to what you expect. Yeah, yeah. It's like backing a trailer up, isn't it? Yeah. You have to sort of like back the back end like it's a trailer. You get used to this. Get the other car on it. We'll get something on it rip some ground up this week that's coming on demo actually. Is it? Get a bit of air into it. Yeah, but it's confusing actually. <laughs> well, I nearly backed into the guy's truck that brought it. I backed up to get a picture next to the big case. And I thought, oh, I'm going a bit closer, I'll turn away from it, and it ended up turning towards it. <laughs> That's going to take somebody in. You it will be with a drill on, won't it? Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at it with Morgan, and obviously it bends in the middle here, that big joint. And that's the power to the back. But how strong must that steel be? Because it's not massively thick, but that's putting all the power to the back end. It's incredible, isn't it, really? It must be like, I don't know what you call it, really high yielding or high tensile steel. Because it's, it's, it? it's got all that size of shaft there, but then it's got them little bits driving them wings. We've got a planetary on the back. So that probably runs... Oh, faster, faster, yeah, faster. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's less torque, but it's still got to put the power through somehow, I suppose, oh, though, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, we need to get a fire extinguisher in here, but we'll, we will put some fire sticks in the cab because they take up no room. I don't think it's got a toolbox either. I don't know what. Oh, yeah. Huh, there we go. Oh, is that, is that the block that's missing off the back? No, those are like. So you bolt those to the side of your link arms and they make the link arms wider. Oh, right. So, like, different pin widths. Is this another toolbox this side as well? Yeah. I thought the batteries were in them. No, they're empty. Uh, yeah. What a weapon. So Tom Tom Pemberton messaged me yesterday and said, so if I want to go silaging and it's wet, you've got something to pull the trailers. You could roll a clamp with it, couldn't you? Yeah. Found another box up here. And it can't have the batteries in because it's very shallow, so we'll see what. Well, I never. I should imagine changing these batteries is not going to be fun. You'd have to forklift them up here, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> or or, or turn pins out and then, like. Yeah. Must be so it's balanced, wasn't it? Not a job for the faint hearted. Good job we. Uh, the ignition didn't flat the battery anyway. So. You can see it's a big track, look at the size of the letters. <laughs> Hand for scale. <laughs> yeah. So we've got all these bales of straw that have fell over. Well, we're going to sort through and get the good ones out of them. And the ones that need drying. And the ones that are completely knackered. We'll spread on a field and work in. So we're just coming up with a plan now. See how many we can salvage. Getting through now. What's annoying is there's a few 
that have just fell over and burst. The straw's actually really good. But it's all a bit mixed. It's whether we've got the, the labour to sort through it all and rebale them. I'm just grading them now into what needs drying, what doesn't need drying, what's suitable for a biomass boiler and what's going to go through the muck spreader. There's a robin. Watching robin. <laughs> what do they say when you see a robin near? There's a look. No, what's it saying? Uh, when a robin appears, there's a loved one near. Something like that. Oh, <laughs> that's that's magpies. We have to move because that bale's going now. Where's the other one? Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. Morgan's dropped the fertiliser spread off because we won't be using that for a few days. He's now putting a Valtra on the drill to test it. I'm just running these pallets, this, sorry, this pallet with these wheels on next door, ready to go on the truck, but it's going to pick the first sower up, the boom first sower tomorrow. The ISO bus on the drill isn't communicating properly with the tractor and one of them needs a software update but we don't know whether it's a drill or we don't know whether it's a tractor so he's going to plug into the Valtra, see how it works on the Valtra and then it'll tell us then which which needs the software update hopefully without doing them both just as, as a matter of course and I think the ball hitch has arrived as well for the boom spreader so that's in that box so let's have a quick picture of that Down it. Yeah, we got got it through cramp because it was cheaper than anyone by a mile. Mm. Put it on the tractor later, see what it's like. Ended up looking at a paddock for a neighbour. Um, normally cut hay on it. Last summer was so wet, hay wasn't cut. So it all went completely to seed, twice probably. And anyway, it's just a bit of a, a dry, mouldy mess. So we'll get it flailed, maybe rake it, and then it might need a little bit of grass, uh, a little bit of weed spray in it. See if we can rejuvenate it. Looks like the sea, doesn't it? Is that a seal over there? No, it's a seagull. It's quite a dangerous road, so I pulled the Merlot in the field, drove down the tram line. It's a bit wet. This, I don't know what's happened here with the cover crop. It doesn't seem to be on the headland. It just seems to have grown in the middle, but not a lot, unless, oh, actually it could have been the last one we did. We just used what seed we had left. But it'll be a while before this dries up enough to get on. But we now have got 10 days dry with only a little chance of rain on Saturday, so. This was beans last year, it should have been wheat. It's been too wet to get on. It's quite compacted in the top surface. Quite a lot of clay content in this soil. And then this here, we tried to zoom up, but it was a bit wet. So we went up and down and now this has slumped even worse. And even like, you can see water's nearly lying in it. Anyway, hopefully this week it'll dry up enough to get on it. Obviously last night I went to see Caleb. Anyway, we had some tickets together and then some Martin's ticket was further away. But when I spoke to uh, Caleb's tour manager, he said, oh, don't worry about that. We can put you all sat together. So I had to go and pick the tickets up just before the event. Anyway, here's a little bit of a sneak backstage. Backstage. You see anyone we know? In the crowd. So me and Joe have just gone backstage because uh, they were like, oh, you can bring one person with you to meet Caleb. Well, Charlotte's already met him several times. So I brought Joe. But of course, when I walked past the front of the theatre, there was loads of farmers there going, there's Ollie and he's not with Charlotte. Who's he with? It's quite funny. <laughs> I'm on one Merlot. Rob's got the other one. I was going to say he's on the other one, but he's not. He's just gone to open the gate. Because we had locked up and Jenkinson's rung up and said, can we come for a chip in 15 minutes? So... It's now about half five and we're just going to load up a load of chip. Better to do it now than let him sit in the yard overnight sometimes. Morgan went flailing that grass because it wasn't fit to do any any sort of like groundwork or like top work on the field. So 
he's gone flooding out for the neighbour, so I think he might have got a video. There it is. Just out here flailing with the Veltra. There's this field here, which is quite grassy. It's bloody all dead stuff. It's very dusty, which is why we've got the bonnet up. Oh, we're going to take out the air filter up here because it keeps getting blocked. handy when your air filter looks like that. It's been the case a couple times now. It's just so, because it's so windy. Seeing the trees blowing in the back. Back in action again. You can see how dusty it is. I don't know if it picks it up on camera. It's flying loads of this dead grass. It's really dry out into the intake there. And it's uh, picking it up and going into the air filter. But this corner back here is bloody wet. So avoid all of that and I've kind of made a little cut through here. Um, yeah, you can see a bit of mess down there. Just wheelings. Um, yeah, and then I've cut back. I'm trying to steer as well. Cut back all of the uh, brushed up and down there. So there's a lot less. The field's scrubbed up nice and furnace. See back there, it's a, good, a lot better than all of this stuff here. You can really see how dusty this is now. Uh, better with the lights on than you could before. So it's, it's really bloody dusty. Can't really see it behind me, but it just so happens the air filter side is the worst there. So it's less than ideal. Someone just messaged us that they just missed the birthday bumper. So Henry or Hen Bob, I think they call him, McManahan, is 16 today. So now he can do his track test for driving on the road. Anyways, this truck backs up. Me and Rob will get it out as quick as we can because it's now turned colder than it was all day, dead windy. And it's also started raining, which is annoying because it's supposed to be dry all day. Rob's just moved the digger down the yard, he's put mud everywhere, so he's going to sweep that up with the little solace brush. Anyway, dead quick birth for today. Dan Guzny's on there. Neil Evans from the VI is on there as well. I think Dan might be in the same group, to be fair. Um, that's the volunteer initiative for, for what you do with your Neurosa points. Jimmy Jacko is 53. Phil Cool Mears is on there. Jamie Sumners or Summers is on there. Aaron McNowan, McNowan, I think it's pronounced. I think you might have been on yesterday, but I couldn't remember. So I'll put you on again. Laura is 27. Uh, Joanne Lawson's 33. George Gillian is 12. Len Curry is on there. And Jackie Gunn is 55. So happy birthday, everyone, on today's birthday bumper. It's like daylight when he turns the lights on on the Valtra. Anyway, that's all for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. In fact, no. Oh no, it's probably not time. If there is, you're going to see another four minutes of uh, me and Martin talking about SFI. If the video's too long, you're not. So you'll see it tomorrow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.